It's election season in Ontario and the release of the provincial budget is the unofficial official launch of the provincial campaign. Ontarians go to the polls in June. It's set election dates in Ontario. The writ hasn't officially been issued, but we know that the leaders will be out on the campaign trails and billions of your dollars have already been promised, announced. Let's see whose plan Ontarians really would like to see moving forward. Four years ago, of course, Doug Ford's progressive conservative government swept into office with a supermajority. But four years later, and a pandemic and a few missteps, where is the State of the Union? I'm Adrian Batra. Brian Lilly and Warren Kinsella are with me. Okay, Brian, um, my quick overview of where things are at. Let's put it to you. Doug Ford is going for re-election. Let's just put it pointedly. Does he have a shot? Oh, he absolutely has a shot. And even with Conservatives angry at how much uh, they're spending, it is a record $198 billion provincial budget. Never spent that much. Health spending's up $9 billion since before the pandemic. Education spending about three. Long-term care up to all these things. The NDP and Liberals are still saying, not enough. And then the NDP puts out a graphic on Twitter uh, with a Netscape Navigator image, like who remembers Netscape <laughs> Navigator? It, it looks like they designed this uh, attack on Ford's budget in 2002 instead of 2022 and said, there's nothing in the budget about healthcare. We need to spend more. There's an entire chapter in the budget on healthcare. So the NDP, not up to, for prime time. The Del Duca liberals trying to court the NDP, I don't know, maybe form a coalition just like they, they did uh, at the federal level, become kissing cousins. But, you know, it, it's going to be a, a stark choice between two very left-wing parties and a party mm -hmm. that is much more centrist. All right, Warren, our, our liberal friend, there's a lot of whinging on uh, that side of the aisle about Doug Ford's uh, election budget. The budget came down, the House rose. And now here we are without officially having the writ, but there's a lot of politics behind that. So is it a warranted criticism or is this just, you know, Del, Stephen Del Duca, the liberal leader and Andrea Horvath trying to make hay out of what's really nothing? I, I, I think it's a lot like what we've seen federally. And, you know, I don't recognize, I ran all of Dalton McGinty's war rooms. I confess I did that. And um, I don't recognize the Ontario Liberal Party anymore. They're more left of the, the NDP. Like it, it's, it's extraordinary, some of the stuff that El Duca has been saying. And I think it's symptomatic. It's representative of how desperate he is. I understand his desperation. If you look at the polls, Ford is looking at 70 plus seats. He just needs 63 for a majority. Del Duca is going to go up, but when you only have seven seats, it's kind of hard not to go up. And Horvath is going to go down and she's probably not going to be the leader of the opposition anymore. But Del Duca's play is to out NDP the NDP. And I'm mm -hmm. not sure that's that works to his advantage. I think it works to Doug Ford's advantage because as Brian just pointed out, and you pointed out, this is kind of a centrist budget. One of the things um, that the, the opposition, of course, Brian, keeps throwing at Doug Ford, and you heard it in the budget reaction, was that he's only interested in, quote, his buddies and the rich people and his donors. See future cuts to the things people need most and billions of dollars heading to his buddies on unnecessary and wasteful boondog boondoggles. The challenge I see with that sort of charge is that the rhetoric doesn't match because I don't believe Ontarians, regardless of the eye-watering spending that just happened in the provincial budget, I don't believe Ontarians think Doug Ford is in it for himself, in it for his buddies. He's probably one of the best retail politicians in this country. So how do the, how do the Liberals and the NDP think that that is a narrative that sticks to someone like Doug Ford? Well, it's the official narrative of the NDP. So they must have focus grouped this because they keep saying Doug Ford and his buddies. Doug mm -hmm. Ford's out to make his buddies rich. The Liberals hang on it a bit as well. You know, as I mentioned earlier, it's hard to tell the two of them apart. That's something I've put directly to the leaders and they, they dispute it and then start repeating the same lines like this. 
Let me go to the budget and the spending though. If Doug Ford is all about his developer buddies and making developers rich and plowing the green belt to, to build highways everywhere, it's all, it's all we're gonna have in this budget is highways. But there's 60 billion in there for transit. Most of it going to building new subways in Toronto that will get Doug Ford a grand total of two votes and mm -hmm. you know galvanize people who hate him already because they want more transit but just not the subway near them uh so he's spending 60 billion on that it's 25 billion on highways over 10 years tell me that when you're spending less than half on highways than you are on transit that it's all about highways and his developer buddies it you're right the rhetoric doesn't match uh, the reality but they're going to keep pushing it because in politics you play on uh, people's perceptions of the person and you try and find a, a little uh, a little spot that you can chisel away at and that's what they're hoping to do there it's it's like saying that uh, the ndp are fiscally irresponsible but on that when you look at their platform they actually are they want to hire 30,000 new nurses 20,000 new teachers 10,000 more psws i don't know where we'll find all these people because we're short labor in ontario um and they have no spending plan or revenue plan for how to pay for that. That's a very expensive proposition. If you want to do it, great, but at least tell us how. Warren, no one knows better than you. Campaigns matter. Anything can change in a day, in a, in, in, in a 24 hour news cycle. Do you see, and I know I'm asking you to crystal ball this a little bit, but June 2nd is election day. That's not far away. There is, already a roadmap of the campaign platform for the for the PCs and for Ford. The Liberals and the NDP, if you were to twist yourself into a pretzel for a moment, what's your advice to them? How do they erode some of the support that Doug Ford still enjoys? Well, you know, Horvath needed to leave. This be, you know, she's had four losses in a row and so she needed to go. They needed a new uh, leader and uh, they don't have that. So they don't really have anything new to put in the window. So I don't know the answer to your question. Del Duca needed to be more like a centrist Ontario liberal. And, um, you know, he has been lurching back and forth. Uh, Leuna, who I represent, issued an ad yesterday that we, we had in the paper where it talked about, you know, he's been kind of up and down like a toilet seat. Like voters want to see consistency. They want to see what you believe in. They want to know what your core beliefs are. And as Brian just pointed out, the thing that we've learned about Ford, particularly since the start of the pandemic, is he is not an ideological, hardcore, Mike Harris-style conservative. He's actually quite centrist, and so is his government. I mean, like, you know, my, my firm, the Daisy Group, did an analysis, like, you know, this low-income low individuals and families tax credit up to 50,000 bucks, that's the kind of thing you'd expect to see from a liberal government, or may, dare I say it, even an NDP government. So he's really taken the middle course. Del Duca needed to stop him from doing that. But Del Duca, by moving far to the left, gave up the center. So now Ford has got you know, the center right option, but he's also got the center as well, while the other two are fighting for the left. And there's just not enough votes on the left to win government, a majority government in Ontario. Speaking of the politics of all of this, this budget document, let's call it the election platform for the PC party. This is um, from their perspective, Brian, they want a, a, a very clear narrative and it's about affordability and job creation. Do you think that Doug Ford has the credibility to do that, to sell that message considering um, his government uh, and the stewardship over the province in the last four years? I think he does because they've, I think they're tapping into something that's out there. People want economic hope uh, right now. It, you'll notice that this is not a, an economic message. Conservatives win when they run on the economy. But mm -hmm. instead of in the past, they may have run on, we'll balance the budget and fix the books. He's not running on that. He's saying, I'll look after your books. I'll, I'll give you economic opportunity. I'll find ways to make your life more affordable, which with inflation at 5.7%, I just came back from the grocery store. Um, everybody's concerned about it. Everybody's concerned about what the cost of living is. Rather than taxing people nonstop, 
Why don't we put money back into their pockets to make it more affordable to be able to live? People are getting crunched right, right across the board. So yeah, he, he's got an opportunity to do that. And, and also because, as Warren was just talking about, the other guys have, have ceded ground. They don't want to build the 413. When Doug Ford builds a school or a hospital, they complain. They're like Philadelphia 76ers fans. They go to the airport and boo safe landings. They don't like anything good happening. And, and so Ford is out there saying, I'm going to build, I'm going to build, I'm going to build. And the other guys are saying, no, Ford's narrative actually writes itself. And, and, and instead of the liberals or the NDP trying to find ways to disprove it, they prove it all the time. Warren, for any of us that, uh, you know, including our editorial in the Toronto Sun, any of us that wanted to see any sort of sort of fiscal sanity, uh, that's kind of out the window right now when we should have known better because it's an election season and the spending taps are on. The province is enjoying an extraordinary amount of revenue coming in part from the federal government. But this is this is an interesting document because I think it's strategic in that they literally drove a steel truck in the back uh, in, in Andrew Horvath's backyard in Hamilton and talked about green technology for the steel industry being developed and created in Hamilton. How does someone like, how does she oppose that? You know, I know it's the opposition's job to just say everything's bad in this. This is the worst document ever. This is terrible. But how does someone, how does she oppose something like that for her own constituents? And that's the problem that Jagmeet Singh's got federally, too, is that Trudeau's occupied all of his real estate. And the other thing is we're hearing rumors that she's interested in running for mayor of Hamilton, where I think she'd have a shot. But that's a hell of a dispiriting message to get out to your troops just before an election that hasn't even started yet, that she's already thrown in the towel and is thinking about quitting politics. So, like, I don't understand the NDP campaign. They came up with a couple ads uh, yesterday or the day before, they're crummy. The Liberals came up with a couple ads yesterday, they're crummy. Like when you're in opposition, you've got to have a clear, coherent, cohesive message. And neither of them do. And the thing I don't get is they've had four years to get ready for this thing. You know, when I worked for McGinty, like we'd spend four years getting ready for one day. And that hasn't happened here. And, I, you know, in the case of both of these parties, I don't see a clear message. I don't see a whole lot of organization. And that's why we're also hearing guys like Brian and I and you, we're hearing that the Ford guys are ahead even in places like Toronto. They're ahead in the north, you know, places where they haven't been competitive that as long as I can remember, the Ford guys are on the move because I think most people, including people who don't like Doug Ford, feel that he did a good job but during the pandemic. The pandemic changed everybody's perceptions, and I think it's worked to Doug Ford's advantage. We certainly know one group of individuals that do not like the Ford government, nor Doug Ford, Brian, of course, that are the Trudeau liberals. They can't help themselves but inject into inject their personalities, their perspectives, their opinions, whether informed or not, into any election. And we know that they will not be able to help themselves this time around as well. Are we going to see some interference from the Trudeau liberals in the Ontario election? We saw that a little bit earlier in the week with uh, Davenport, Toronto Davenport Liberal uh, MP Julie Zerowitz, who stood up in the House of Commons and accused Doug Ford of crimes against humanity over his climate change targets. Not because he <laughs> changed his climate change targets, but changed how we would get there oh by including God. by including that very uh, green steel thing that you mentioned which both the Trudeau government and the Ford government put money into to make gr uh, steel greener in Hamilton and reduce emissions. Because they included that, she declared that they're guilty of crimes against humanity. She made a fool of herself. But some people are a bit more nuanced than that. Omar Al-Gabra, the transportation minister and a, Toronto, a GTA MP, he was out on Twitter right after the budget expressing real disappointment that they wouldn't get all day go train service to Milton and people of Milton deserve better. So, you know, expect Omar to be out campaigning. There has been a detente between the Trudeau guys and the Ford guys since before the last federal election, because the Ford guys told them, if you make us a punching bag like you did in the last election, we've got a war chest and we'll come after you. So they said, OK, you know, 
tools down, we'll have a ceasefire. We'll see if that continues during this election or if the Trudeau guys are and the Trudeau NDP coalition are going to jump in to help the Horvath del Duca coalition at the provincial level. Well, we certainly will continue this conversation as Ontario goes to the polls in June. The Toronto Sun will keep you informed and updated from all the angles on the issues that matter to you, from affordability to job creation to whether or not you're going to be able to keep some money in your own pocket. How much are those promises costing you? We will have a special election newsletter that you can subscribe to. We will also keep you informed on torontosun.com. So log on to Facebook and Twitter, let us know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.